We are back. We are live. Uh, it's been a bit. It's been a bit. Uh, Craig, hello. How are you? Good to see you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Happy to be here. Uh, Illinois Post Game Show from No One Asked Us. He's Craig Choate. I am Logan Lee. Following Best the now Illinois Post Game Show. What I what what I say? Best damn Illini postgame show. <laughs> it's the best damn Illini <laughs> postgame show when we actually do one. Uh, final in Champaign, 95-85 <laughs> uh, over the Hawkeyes. Uh, ugly, just a ugly, weird basketball game. We have plenty of things to talk about. Um, but yeah, we're, we're happy to be here. We apologize for, for <laughs> the lack of shows the last week. Uh, things got a little busy, and uh, so... Um, we did not do a show uh, the past two games, but we are back today. Uh, Mark, hello. Good to see you. We are back. Um, glad that you're here with us. Uh, let's just start off the show right off the bat, just to address a couple things uh, before we get into this game. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. From Logan. <laughs> From Logan. I have not watched, listened to, <laughs> read anything, literally anything. About the Penn State game. I did not watch it as it happened. And other than I know that they blew a 14-point lead and Coleman Hawkins made the dumbest foul of his career, I don't know anything that happened in that game. So uh, we're just going to move past that. That game didn't happen as far as I'm concerned. We're going to jump right into... Uh, um, oh, it happened. <laughs> okay. We're going to jump right into this one. Uh, Craig, what are, your, what are your thoughts off the top here? Do you have any? They won. Do you have things they to won. say? They won. The yes, they, they won. Yes, they won. But even outcome to the side, I had this thought even before the game, and it kind of reinforced it during the game. I'm just ready for the tournament. You know, like, yeah. I don't – this is the 20th, 20th win of the season. This team's going to make the NCAA tournament. Even if they lose the last four and one and done in the Big Ten tournament, I believe this team is making the NCAA tournament. Just get me to the tournament and get me to the second weekend. And none of this matters. You know, it's to that point in the season. I feel like we know what this team is today. Reinforced it. They don't have any defense. They did look better. There were slight improvements, but good teams are going to get the shots they want against this, against this team. So I'm giving them, it'll be about a month uh, to get shit figured out and get me a second weekend. And if they don't, then there needs to be wholesale changes, not head coach, I don't think, but there needs to be philosophy changes, maybe some assistant coaching changes. But that's for the future. Uh, Good win today, but my mentality from here on out is I just want to see what this team does in the postseason in the NCAA tournament. So that's how I was kind of looking at today. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm with I'm with you there. Um, I My comment to you uh, when we first hopped on here before we started recording was that this was just an annoying game. Um, I just – it was just weird uh, not watching on Wednesday or Thursday, whatever night that was, and then to jump into this and to just see – like this team can score, but they just can't defend <laughs> and it's continues no. to get worse and worse. And I, I don't know how you fix that uh, at this point. Um, hello to everybody the, that's the effort, in. The, the effort was much better since you didn't watch Wednesday. The effort on the defensive side was much better at this point. I think it just comes down to a philosophical thing. Like yeah. the coaching staff, and I don't know if it's Brad, I don't know who it is. They're just too stubborn to do anything but drop coverage and let these teams take these wide open jumpers. So I saw some improvement, but I still just don't like the drop coverage. I don't think. Yeah. I, I think there are times where it can work, um, but we have seen it time and time again, not work. uh, And it just teams seem to be figuring it out quicker and quicker. Um, And that's just Illinois not adapting. Uh, as I said, hello to everybody that's in uh, watching us live on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook, wherever you're doing this. Uh, and to those of you that are in the chat, welcome. Uh, if you have thoughts, get them, get them out there. We will cover all that stuff. Um, if you're on the YouTube page and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. 
Um, we got plenty more basketball to talk about this year. So uh, let's kind of go over some of the numbers. Uh, this was the Coleman Hawkins game. Um, 30 points for Coleman, a career high for him. Nine for 11 from the field, three for five from three, nine for 11 from the free throw line. Only two points for, or two rebounds uh, from your from your five man, Coleman Hawkins. Uh, not that that really matters, but it, I think it's something of note. Five assists for him as well. Uh, also five turnovers for Coleman Hawkins. Uh, only two other Illini scorers finished in double figures. This team scored 95 points today. The second highest score was two guys that put up 12 points, Taron Shannon Jr. and Justin Harmon. That was it. That was the only double-figure scorers on this team. Uh, but that means that just about everybody that played – actually, everybody that did play for Illinois got into the scorebook. Uh, eight points for Marcus Damask. Six rebounds for him as well. Uh, nine points for Nico Moretti. We'll talk about Nico here soon. Dane Danger played and got some good minutes. Six points for him. Nine points for Quincy Garrier. Had some flashes of Quincy of old there at times. Two points for Ty. Three points for Luke Goody. Uh, and four points for Amani Hansbury. Uh, we'll also we'll also talk about him. Uh, let's start with Coleman. Uh, I think right off the bat, this Coleman kind of took over the scoring. He was lighting it up early on um, and was really carrying the load offensively. Um, this is the Coleman Hawkins that draft people are going to be looking at. And this, this is the player that NBA teams are are looking for. Somebody that can light it up, um, that can do a lot of things, get, can get his ball, his hand on the ball on the defensive side, to tip some things away, get some blocks, get some steals, uh, finish at the rim, run the court. Like Coleman Hawkins did a lot of things tonight. Granted, he didn't do much rebounding, um, but other than that, he really filled up the stat sheet to go along with 30 points. This was definitely a Coleman Hawkins game. Yeah, I thought he played well. Um Turnovers are concerning. I think I saw Derek Piper tweeted, it's back-to-back -back games now um, with five turnovers for Hawkins. And prior to that, prior to these two games, he had like five total all season. I don't think that statistically that doesn't seem right. But um, I'm pretty sure Piper said something about how he had cut down on uh, many turnovers. Uh, but yeah, I thought he, he scored like, if not the first 10, 10 of the first 12, maybe. Um, five turns in back-to-back -back games for Coleman Hawkins had only one five turnover game this season going into this week. Okay, so that makes sense. That makes sense. That's That was Derek Piper's tweet. Um, but yeah, he, he came out hot. Um, he's, he's shooting the ball so well right now. Like, mm -hmm. I'm more comfortable with him shooting a three than... Maybe anybody. Um, Luke and Terrence are right there with him, but I think right now I probably trust Coleman more behind the arc than either of those guys. Um, he's really yeah. shooting the ball well. Uh, he got to the line a lot tonight. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, a really good game. That that pass he made to Harmon, I know mm -hmm. uh, I know Hummel was ecstatic about that one. Uh, yep. There was like a minute and a half left. Uh, Clock shot clock winding down, and he just no look fired it down low, and and Harmon scored. But yeah, yeah it was a great, great game from Coleman. Great bounce back because he looked. I know you didn't watch. He looked awful at Penn State. And full disclosure for me as well. Um, Logan told me he was unavailable for a post game, so I was just planning on watching the show, watching the game, doing a show bike by myself. And then we got invited to the Louisville game um, the same night. Like it was at seven so Illinois was at 6 30 that game was at seven I was like ah it's Penn State I'll just watch it on my phone or turn it on uh, at the game or something so we went to the Louisville game so I was not fully invested until about four minutes left when shit really started to hit the fan and it kind of ruined my night so I was not watching the whole game but I know Coleman played awful for the most part so it was it was great to see him bounce back the way he did because yeah. you know we know how emotional he is so it was a, it was a good answer from him yeah, it was a nice night for him. You talked about the pass. There was a couple nice passes uh, in this game. Marcus Damask yeah. had a couple really nice finds. Had found Monty Hansberry down in the paint. I think it was Monty. Um, had the alley oop to Quincy. Like, yeah, there was did. there yeah. was some some good flashes of that. Um, and Nico looked good also, too. Um, Damask also tried to throw a full court inbounds pass with yes. a minute left. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like what? Yes. What was that? I I don't know. Um. So yeah, this is definitely the Coleman Hawkins game. Um, I mean, I think to me the the next 
I don't know if we want to call them the everyday guys, but I mean, the two freshmen, two of the three freshmen played today. Uh, there was no Dre Gibbs Lawhorn, but uh, Amani Hansberry got a lot of early minutes. Uh, looks like Illinois was trying to do a little, do some things differently. Uh, Iowa has a couple bigger players. So uh, we saw Coleman and Dane on the floor um, early, which is not something we've seen a lot of. And then we saw a lot of Amani with Coleman on the floor. Um, so it was, it was really good to see uh, both uh, Amani early on. And then, and then Nico, Nico came in. Um, as a part of the the line change, the Brad Underwood's pissed off at the effort. I'm going to throw in the first five guys on the bench. Uh, chose Nico over Dre, probably wanting a legitimate point guard on the floor, I guess, in that situation. And Nico, <laughs> Nico showed out, man. Uh, he was he was fantastic. Nico uh, Nico Moretti played 17 minutes, all in the second half. Um, nine points for him, two rebounds, an assist. Um, did turn the ball over once 11, uh, positive 11 in the plus minus for Nico, which was second on the team behind only Justin Harmon, who put up 23 in the plus minus. Uh, so yeah, I think the two freshmen, uh, Nico and Amani really kind of showed out. We hadn't really, we hadn't really seen a lot of it. Brad hasn't really gone very deep. The, the bench is about eight deep or the t- the roster is about eight deep. The rotation is about eight deep and, uh, saw both of those guys really kind of show out tonight. First career three pointer for Nico, and it was smooth. Both of them, yeah, both yeah. of them. I don't know if they hit the rim. They were uh, they were in rhythm. They they looked really good. Um, yeah, we were all. A couple of the guys were talking about how he needs to start, and I, I just don't think that's going no. to happen. Um, no. But it's nice to have the option, you know. Um, yeah, I I think that was a big, and we've talked we talked a lot preseason about it. And then we kind of got away from it because they were playing so well, the whole no point guard thing. Um, I think that might have been a little bit of a factor on Wednesday in the Penn State game because, you know, they started pressing. And I know Terrence had the one turnover trying to break the press and they just couldn't get the ball across half court and they were scrambling. Um, so it's good to have Nico and Harmon played excellent. Not He wasn't a, not one of the freshmen you're talking about, but right. uh, Justin Harmon played absolutely great. Um, the one thing I noticed – uh, again, not a freshman, but uh, Dane here. Um, Dane and Amani, and I know the post game pressers and the other media have talked at nauseum about how vocal Amani is. Um, and I noticed it with Dane today too on the defensive side on the ball screens. Dane was, you could tell he was talking and he was kind of playing the the quarterback out there because he's he's back and can see what's happening. Um, so I think that led to a lot of the the improvement on the defensive end. Um, I don't know how much we see those freshmen. I don't know if it's going to become a regular uh, – how many minutes did they play? 11 – no, where's minutes at? I don't think Moretti's going to get 17 minutes a game from here on out. I don't think no. Hamani Hansberry is going to get 13 minutes a game from here on out. Um, but it's nice to have those options, get them some game experience – and show that they can hold their own. I mean, Amani had four rebounds as well. He had four points and four rebounds um, in his 13 minutes. So it, it was a it was it was needed because if you look at the minutes, Quincy and Ty played a combined six minutes in the second half. Like they they didn't see the floor at all. They were they were non-existent in the second half. Luke Goody played four minutes in the second half. It was. It was Nico's. He had the most minutes of anyone in the second half. Nico Moretti, seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen. Uh, All of I his mean, seventeen minutes in the second half. Did anyone see that coming? No, <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. No, but I have. You, ha- you always you have these games every year where something goes awry and some freshman who has hardly play, who has hardly played all year gets in there and uh, and I, I don't I do not think that Nico should be your starting point guard at this point. Like that's just not, that's just not, that's just not a thing, but I agree. I, I, it's nice to know that you have him. Um, Marcus Damask has done fine as a facilitator. Um, now teams like Penn state was able to do, um, can find ways to take advantage of that. Uh, but for the most part, I, I think, I think the rotation has worked. Um, and at some point, I mean, you'll, you'll probably start to see a little bit more of them. Um, uh, but at this point in the season, like maybe not every game counts the next few days or the next couple weeks, but 
uh, that once you want to have your rotation ready to go come come March. So, um, you know, we'll see we'll see what happens from there. Um, who else from a player perspective do we need to focus on? It wasn't Terrence didn't really have much going on tonight. Uh, 12 points for him, two for seven from three, two for only two point or two free throws. Uh, for Terrence Shannon, only got to the line for two free throws, made 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 them both, uh, but twelve points for him. As you talked about, Quincy and uh, Ty and Luke hardly even played in the second half. Um, Quincy looked good in the first half. Yeah, he did. Aggressive. He did. He was aggressive again, getting to the driving to the hoop, getting in there, flying in for rebounds. Uh, but yeah, this for whatever reason. Um, they didn't really go to him in the second half. And again, it could be matchup. It could be whatever. And I'm sure Brad will talk about it and his post game presser, but um, yeah, just not for much. Justin those Harmon. In the yeah. Let's, I know you've been flashing up some of, of the stuff from the chat. Um, yeah. Justin Harmon had a nice game. What else are people saying? That's really, I mean, it's a lot of Justin Harmon. Yeah. It was a nice night for Harmon. Yeah. He was, yeah. he was great. He, and he didn't get in until like, Three minutes left in the first half. Yes. And I, I, so I thought that was the case. I remember watching thinking when he did come in, I thought, has he not played yet? I mean, yeah. and he hadn't, but then he again came in as part of that line change in the early on in the second half. And I don't know that he sat down much after that. So, uh, yeah, he was Justin Harmon was great. Uh, Nico Moretti was great. Coleman Hawkins was great. And that's really about the extent of it. Uh, but yeah, it's a win. Um, you know, you put up 95 points, you still gave up 85 points to Iowa. This is a good is Iowa about their team. average. They average 83.3 or something like that. Yeah, they can, they can score. They, they got some players. Um, this is an Iowa team that's, you know, as they alluded to in the broadcast could still maybe squeeze their way into the, to the double buy of the big 10 tournament. Um, certainly not out of the question. Um, it's not the same Iowa team we've seen the last few years. Uh, but uh, still, still a good program, still a good team. So um, you're you got to be happy you have this win, but you got to you're gonna need to clean some things up uh, because it doesn't get uh, much easier after today, as far as the schedule goes. Um, what do you think of else? the line change? Oh boy! Uh, clearly, Brad was frustrated uh, with the lack of effort. Yeah. Um, I thought it was most interesting that he stuck with that second rote that second group uh, after Out of the, the timeout. Yeah, I thought and so too. Uh, and then you could see he was really kind of ripping into the to the starters on the bench because they weren't really, um, they didn't really have much uh, emotion on the bench either. So, um, it was just it was just a a move. Sometimes coaches have to make these moves. We've seen Brad do stuff like this in the past. Um, and, and it worked that second, that second group held their own. Um, they look good out there. Good enough, um, to play for the, however, eight minutes it was, um, until he brought the starters back in. Um, and you know, it, it, it worked tonight. It worked. Um, you know, hopefully it fires them up and they realize what they have ahead. Um, but I don't know. He had to have just been so frustrated after what he's seen Tuesday or earlier this week. And then a lot of this game tonight today was um, the defensive effort was obviously um, not there at times. So for him to, you know, make a big move like that, you know, it worked. Did you? Yeah. Were you a fan I, of it or no? Not initially. Um because it included Nico Moretti, Justin Harmon, Luke Goody, Amani Hansberry, and Dane Danger. Like, where's your offense coming from there? <laughs> None of them can get their own shot. So initially, yeah. no. But uh, like one of the comments said here from I think uh, Jimmy Christmas, we did, when we when we weren't losing any ground, it's like okay, this maybe this is working. But you mentioned it in your answer there. What concerned me most is that the starters that were on the bench, it didn't seem to affect them. Yeah. Like it, they didn't get pissed off. Like you think they should, they, they weren't showing any emotion. Like if your head coach takes out all five starters at once for guys that don't play more than eight minutes a game, 
Like, you should get pissed off. And I didn't feel like they did. So that concerned me. Um, obviously, hindsight, it did work out in the end. So, um, and it, it let us it let us learn a lot about Moretti and Hansberry and even Dane. I thought Dane played really well. He just couldn't finish today. He was what three of seven, three of seven from the field, and I don't know what it was because those shots normally go for him. I feel like everything he throws up normally goes. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting call. Um, hindsight twenty twenty, obviously it worked, but I wouldn't like to make that a normal coaching decision no. for for Brad. No, it's just it's just a coach reaching into his bag trying to, you know, pull whatever string he can to get his guys fired up. It's you're at the end of February, for the most part, your team has played well this season. You run into you have a major meltdown earlier this week, and you aren't exactly playing your best basketball to start the second half of this game. So he just, he pulled a string and it worked. Um, you know, if, if you're this team, you have to realize what's ahead. Um, you have one more game against a uh, weaker opponent coming up against Minnesota. And then you close out the regular season with Wisconsin, Purdue and Iowa again on the road. Um, you just got to realize what's ahead because <laughs> yes, you're a tournament team. And yes, you, I don't even want to say you have the, the double buy locked in, um, but you're, you're no, inching only, that way. Um, you got to do more. So hopefully two games clear, I think. Yeah. Hopefully, um, you know, whatever he did was able to light a fire because this, this team's going to need it as you get into March. You can't have those kind of breakdowns because one, one breakdown like that and everything comes to a screeching halt. So uh, I was fine with it. Uh, I agree with you, what you said. I, I wasn't exactly sure where the offense was going to come from, but they held their own, uh, you know, and once the starters came back on the floor, everything was kind of cooking again. So, um, yep. so it worked. Who's your everyday guy? Uh, Justin Harmon. I know Nico gave a lot, but um, Harmon was 12 points. Didn't miss a shot from the field. Didn't miss a free throw. Six of six free throws. Um, four rebounds as well. I thought he brought a lot of energy, um, especially on the boards. So I think whatever Brad's message to him was after the Penn State game, because he was in at the end of the Penn State game. Um, he was inbounding the ball on a couple of those uh, when they were having trouble getting the ball in on the full court. So there must have been a message sent there, and then he didn't see the floor until about two or three minutes left in the first half. So um, I thought the way he, he responded, much like Coleman Hawkins, I, I thought Harmon was a, a big part of the victory uh, for Illinois today. Yeah. I mean, that's the obvious answer. I'll, I'll kind of cheat and take the two freshmen. I think both Amani yeah. and and Nico uh, really showed that they can provide some things. We'll see how much of them we see the rest of the year. Um, I think, again, it's going to be matchup based and all that stuff. But who knows? You know, who knows? You know what you're going to get with these next three or four teams. Uh, and you know what you're going to get with the Big Ten. But who knows what kind of matchup you get in the in the big tournament, and you might need to have a situation where you where you need those guys to step up, and Dre too. But you know, Dre Dre didn't see the floor today, so um, I'll take I'll take uh, Nico and Amani um, for that. What else? Anybody in the chat? We need to we need to um, single out. I see Mark's here, so Mark is here all as well. Yeah, yeah, Mark's back. Okay, great. Um, do we have too many scores for starters? Do you put in Hansberry, other another, and bring in Quincy or to mask off the bench? Mix up the skill sets. No, I mean uh, maybe I, Quincy, but no. I, Brad's I, not one to. He always says he doesn't care about starting lineups, so yeah. I, I don't think anything's going to change. And someone else earlier, I don't know if I can go back and find it. Um, someone else mentioned that. It might have been Mark, actually. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah. Brad's coaching won this game, played around with lineups. So I see where you're coming from there because, yeah, he played a, a lot more guys, so there are going to be different lineups. Um, so I, I do like that, but I don't think the starting lineup changes or, or Nico is in the starting lineup or anything. No. No, I don't think you mess around with that too much. I, I – Wish we would see a little bit more out of some of these guys. Uh, I thought, I mean, early on in the game, I thought Quincy was going to be the guy. Um, yeah. And 
he kind of really disappeared. In the he's getting half. lazy on the on the boards. I, he yeah. there were a couple times he's not he wasn't boxing out and he immediately got taken out. And I I don't think he got back. I don't think he got put back in. Um, Is he? Yeah, up, do you think he's up late changing too many diapers? <laughs> could be. Could be. Um, no, I, I, I like the rotation as it is. I, I think you maybe you mix in some of these guys a little bit more, at least if, if anything, just to give some of your guys rest, because yeah. that's what we've seen this year for the most part is, as we talked about, Brad plays about eight guys deep. Um, so you have players like people like Marcus Damask and Coleman Hawkins and Taryn Shannon that have been playing 34, 35, 36 plus minutes, um, night in and night out. So if anything, at this point in the season, maybe, but uh, as I said, it, it does, it's not exactly like you have uh, a cakewalk of a schedule left. So, uh, and, and while you are fair, you do feel fairly comfortable with where you're stand, where you are in the standings. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't get any easier. So yeah, I mean, I could certainly see them uh, mixing in there a little bit more, but uh, I think it'll really be case by case and, and match up dependent on how much we see those those kind of guys um are, are is the chat or is our twitter are people bitching about brad or are we still on that train or no no one's really no one's talked about brad okay um i'm trying to get caught up here i was doing something else for a point i'm going to make before the show ends um, <laughs> as as I, I just read Kaylee's comment. That's good. That's what I'm reading right now. That's <laughs> game, I'm glad I'm not the only one. We can talk. We can talk about that though, because that I don't think I like that. Like but obviously, it was it? fine. Yeah, I guess it's coming from me. Like I, if I see what I do wrong, or like I learn better, I'm a visual learner, so I need to see it. I guess these guys aren't. I like, mean. Yes and no. I, I don't understand not watching it at all. I think it's one of those things where uh, there's probably two school two schools of thought. You either watch it and overanalyze it, um, every figuring out every single thing you did wrong, um, or you just realize that you have enough sample size on your season and you know what type of team you are and you know that it was just a bad night and you just move yeah. on. You know, yeah. I. I, I they're probably sticking with the second, which I don't think is necessarily right or wrong. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's just they know what they know what they did wrong. They know that they fell apart. They know they fell asleep at the wheel, and you know they were able to find a way to bounce back. So, yeah, I mean, I I'm kind of okay with it at this point. I think you move on. Um. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's it. Probably going to cover it. So up next is uh stay if they stay in champagne uh minnesota comes to town on wednesday night uh minnesota is i don't know eight and seven i think in the big minnesota time. yeah something like yeah. that um not great um but uh it's we'll assume they play today or tomorrow too winnable game uh let's see minnesota minnesota plays tomorrow at nebraska, tomorrow at nebraska. That is correct. So that's next Minnesota on Wednesday. And then as we talked about at Wisconsin Saturday, then the following week you host Purdue on Tuesday and then you go to Iowa city on Sunday. So that's how you close out oh the regular boy. season. <laughs> what? I said, Oh boy. Yeah. I love great. ending the season at Iowa. <laughs> great. Uh, I don't think there'll be much on the line at that point. Maybe a two or a three seed is what you're playing for, but yeah. um I mean, I think that's really what we come down to here. So uh, you got four games left. Love to see you win three of them. Uh, if you can pull off four, great, awesome. I don't, I'm banking on it. Uh, win at least two, go for three. That'd be yeah. my, that'd be my, my hope and pray that they can pull that off. So the um, other point that I wanted to touch on. Yes. And I please. didn't realize oh. this. I'm surprised they didn't. I'm surprised Illinois basketball didn't make a whole stink of it. It was the 1,000th all-time Big Ten win. Oh. Did you see that? That's great. No. They said that on the broadcast. This was Illinois' 1,000th all-time win in the Big Ten conference. Wow. Um, Congratulations. So my, my nerd stat brain has a spreadsheet that oh. I made. I went all the way back to 1918 for Big Ten win totals. Illinois is third on that list 
with 924. So I don't, I think I started at 1918 because that's when I can't remember why I picked that year, but I think that was the year that like all the current teams, except for University of Chicago, were in it or something. So yeah, I didn't go all the way back to inception of the Big Ten, but I went back to 1918. And Illinois is in third with 924 wins behind Purdue and Indiana. I thought I had too much time on my hands. Um, but <laughs> you are probably now, as you're learning, probably now my father's favorite child. Um, <laughs> I would share my screen, but I don't know how to do it on here because I got this whole thing. I would love to see it. Let's see it. Why not? I don't know if I can. I don't know how to share my screen. If you hit the little up upload button, right? For me, it's right there in the middle. You know, there it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> wow. Wow. Kudos to you. Right? Well done. So Illinois <laughs> is, is third? Third since 1918 with 924. It's incredible. I normally update it about, about weekly. I'd update it normally. Uh, How yeah. long have you been doing then, this? Um, I don't know when I made it probably two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Color coordinated and everything. <laughs> oh man. Oh, yeah. my parents are so proud. Um, yeah. that's great. I'm a, uh, I'm a big th- Google. Congratulations, person. Illinois. Um, a thousand, a thousand big 10 wins. That's, it's fantastic. How about we make it, uh, a thousand and what? Eight, nine. How many more, how many more games do you play this year? You got four. Five, six, or seven, thing. eight, nine, ten, twelve, something like that. It's only it's only conference games. Oh, that's a good point. Never mind. Okay, so well then four. Four. Yeah. Four. Thousand and four. Yeah. Four let's thousand do it. and four. All right. Let's shut it down. We're getting delirious. Uh it's only five in the five o'clock in the afternoon. But it is. Uh, you have big plans? Four, big plans for four the night? o'clock for most of our team. That's true. Or for most of our viewers. Um, we have a team? I think uh, I think the in-laws are driving back from Florida, oh. so I think we're gonna Wonderful. probably go have dinner tonight at some point. But uh, That's great. no, other than that, I'm gonna go watch the second half of Kentucky, uh, Alabama, um, and I think at some point this weekend we're gonna watch Oppenheimer. But I don't know Ooh. when that's it's going great. to happen. Great film. Yeah. It's long. I know. Great we film. thought about watching it this week, but I was like, uh, I kind of want to do it on a Saturday or a Sunday and on a weekend bowl of popcorn, like. At least yeah. feel like we're at the movies since we didn't it's go to the, the way movie to do theater it. to watch it. When was the last time you went to the movie theater, Craig? I think, I think Wakanda Forever, maybe. Oh yeah, okay, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, let's shut it down. Final from Champaign, ninety-five, eighty-five. Illinois beats Iowa. Um, Illinois improves to what did you say? Twenty and seven, eleven and five, uh, yeah. on the year. Next up, uh, Wednesday night um, against the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Um, I think we'll be here Wednesday. I don't think I have anything going on. So, um, I assume so. Okay. All right. Well, we'll plan on it. I Ironically, a week ago, Craig hopped on here and said, we're going to be doing this the rest of the year. And then the next two games we managed to skip. So <laughs> I'm just going to tell you now, like, we're going to try to do every one game was my fault. Year. One was Logan's fault. So, but like, we're, honestly, <laughs> who knows who just, who knows it's March. Well, we have lives. Logan also texted me about halfway through the second half. Like I have no interest in talking about this game. <laughs> win or lose. I, didn't. I was so annoyed. <laughs> I was so annoyed. I wasn't even mad. I was just annoyed. Whatever. Um, Okay, we're going to sign off. For Craig, I'm Logan. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. Goodbye. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. (laughs) If you didn't do it, I was going to. (laughs) Hello. Goodbye.